folks, and welcome to The Ben Show, where the work ends and the fun begins. Catch Beck if you can. That's me, your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. Beck, 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 Beck. As always, we love hearing from all of you. Comments, stories, ideas. Get a hold of me anytime. Call or text 305-900-BEND. That is 305-900-2363. Or drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. My producer, sound engineer, and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart, is with us. We have a lot going on with today's show. We're going to be covering some smart and savvy travel tips. We're going to be taking Tigger and I are going to be taking you to the backyard and talking to you about how to make sure you are ahead of the game this gardening season. Plus, we have graduation gift ideas and so much more. Let's get rolling. As a kickoff to summer this upcoming weekend, meaning Memorial Weekend, it's just ahead if you weren't aware. And it's a coincidence that next Friday, May 27th, will also be National Road Trip Day. I thought Tigger and I should maybe spotlight a few smart and savvy tips for the upcoming road tripping season. Fill so, your vehicle full of fuel before you go. That's actually on my list. Nice and work. make sure that the back window of the ranch truck isn't <laughs> busted before you go to I, said brand. I have branding. no idea who might have broke that. I have no idea who did But you know, either. if you've been using your vehicle a lot this winter and spring, commuting to work and whatnot, make sure you know you are hopefully getting off the place and going a little bit further down the road. Make sure to take it in for a quick checkup, maybe an oil change, check your tire pressure, top off the fluids. And while you're doing all that, also be sure to double check that you have things like a first aid kit along with. Also, it's summer. We're ready for the season, meaning we're going to need Bug spray, sunscreen. These are just some items that are good to keep in your vehicle to make your all trip more summer comfy. long. Absolutely. Last thing you want to do is be out in the road and, and get say, sunburned Hey, and get, you got it. You got it. Times. Now, hopefully, you're hearing this early enough in the week, too, that you are planning your itinerary. I know it's a few days out, but decide are you doing one of those destinations that's a must do, must see? Or are you planning to kind of get lost wherever the road leads? That's the kind I like. Tigger hates it, but I love going wherever the road may lead. What's up, Tigger? You got your I, hand up. I have a question. And remember a couple of years ago how it was so busy going into our national parks? Yes. What have you been finding out thus this far as things settle down Actually, considerably? Or no, is it still I'm going to be talking about that later in the show in the news. But oh. FYI, Groovy. yes, trip. Um, travel is uptick. I mean, it is. It's happening this even year. with the price of fuel. People it doesn't are, are still matter willing to get because people the are run. having a little bit of this. I deserve to be able to get out and travel because COVID has been lifted in many areas, Great. and they're willing to spend the extra bucks. Absolutely. So, if you are needing a hotel, motel, even a campsite, make sure you haven't made your reservations. Call ahead. Otherwise, here's one other tip: be sure to throw a blanket pillow in your car or your vehicle just in case you're doing some uh, car camping. I know Tigger and I enjoy car camping, but if you're not prepared... That you might <laughs> be stuck. I'm with, I got you. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And this is one part of the thing that Tigger and I have learned when we're on the road, especially when we're hitting up rodeos. And sometimes him and I, again, I like to urge him to take the uh, off the beaten path road trip way to get to said destination, meaning... We have no cell phone service. I know you're thinking everywhere has cell phone service these days. They don't. I just like to get to (laughs) said destination. (laughs) So make sure you have a paper map or AKA an atlas in your vehicle. Great idea. Very important. And before you head out, make sure, you know, you've heard me say in other shows, the buddy system. Make sure you do tell somebody that you are heading out of town. It could be a loved yeah. one. It could be a friend. Just Let say, your kids know. Yes, you know, know what? I might be long gone for X amount of days. Here is my last and final tip. And Tigger and I both do this all the time. We make sure before we leave home, the house is in order. And that means, mm. you know, Close uh-huh. your windows, throw away any food that could go bad, take out the trash, yes. lock the doors. But then here's the most important part, because you just spent all this time and money to get away, to relax. Make sure you're returning home to an inviting inviting environment. There you go. That's a little tongue twister. And clean up around the house a little bit. You who Nobody wants to come home to a tornado that ran through their house. Who taught you that? You. Mm-hmm. There you have it, everybody. There were some tips. Sit back and enjoy the news. Heading to Michigan, 
The weather is beautiful, but experts are warning people about going into Lake Michigan. Between the cold water temperatures and variable current patterns, people should definitely use caution. Michigan's Department of Natural Resources wants people to know, especially since it's too early for lifeguards and flag warnings, that Lake Michigan might look inviting, especially when temperatures hit 70 and 80 degrees, but the water itself is still dangerous. First off, the water is very cold and can cause hypothermia. The Great Lakes are surprisingly cold with some areas having water temps still in the upper 40s, and the cold can take one's life very quickly. The second area of concerns are the changing currents that can also contribute to even the strongest swimmers being dragged under. According to the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project, the best thing to do if you are caught in the undercurrent is to stay calm and float on your back until help arrives. The Michigan DNR is putting a new ticketing system in place at state parks for people who go in the water during hazardous conditions. The goal with these tickets is to act as a big reminder for people to take heed of the warning and that the cost for not heeding the warning could be a $500 ticket and law enforcement or park rangers will be enforcing the measure. Now, folks, I've spent a lot of time around Lake Michigan and please do to pay attention. These warnings are very real, very true, and we can all enjoy a great season ahead on the Great Lakes if we just hold on a little bit and let the temperatures warm up and watch out for those undercurrents. Here is a term you may or may not have heard, revenge travel. Yes, I said revenge travel. Experts say revenge travel is a media buzzword that originated last year when the world began to reopen and people decided to make up for lost time. Part of the problem is that there isn't one good way to describe the current mood of travel around the globe. Post-pandemic travel isn't quite accurate since the pandemic isn't quite over in many places. Different countries and regions are operating on different timelines with some eliminating all barriers to entry while others remain strictly controlled or even closed to foreign visitors. But in other words, revenge travel is becoming popular, especially with the youngest generation, as simply put as a w another way of saying, hey, life is short. I want to book that trip. I want to spend more time with family. I want to connect with humanity and with nature, or I want to explore the world and seek experiences that make me feel alive. So with that mindset in mind, the travel industry is seeing an influx in airline tickets being sold and hotels booking quickly. If you have a destination in mind for this coming summer and fall, experts say book early. Check your travel insurance coverage and be aware of more people just as you are excited to be back on the road again. That's a wrap of the news. Stay where you are. More of The Bend right after this. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, Head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Passionate about hunting, conservation, learning, and encouraging others? Watch Buckstorm on YouTube. Weekly videos about what it's really like hunting the Black Hills. Regardless the trophy or left empty-handed, Buckstorm on YouTube shares the real stories. Subscribe today, Buckstorm. Public service announcement. Drought is affecting many states this year. Due to the low water levels, many of our favorite lakes and rivers may have limited boating access. Plan ahead. Check with local authorities for boat ramp closures or changes. Be prepared and plan ahead. Waterfowl, turkey, deer. ToxicCalls.com offers all of the various styles of calls needed to take your hunt to the next level when you create quite simply the most real sound yet. American made to boot? Order today. ToxicCalls.com. Want to add just a little bit of spice to your event, your customer appreciation supper, your banquet, your meeting? Oh, yeah. Well, bring in us, Beck and I, your keynote speakers, hosts, MCs, a host couple. We'll make them laugh, even cry tears of joy. Call us today. Welcome back, everyone. You know, gardening to landscaping, talking about 
even our at home sanctuaries, our backyard living. You know, it's that time of our year. Our relationships that we don't kill each other of said project. <laughs> yes, I would assume that we're, we're always cultivating. Well, all <laughs> look, look at me. Look, I think I've just spun every oh. buzzword that deals with the rural lifestyle right. into one sentence. Boom. Well, you know, the early spring blooms, such as tulips, we know are done. Or if they're not, they're almost done for where you're at. And you're getting ready to get your gardens and flower buds ready for those new blooms of summer and the fruits and veggies to the daylilies and all those other beautiful plants we love. And, you know, Tigger, I think it's the ranch kid in us, the farm kid in us. We all do enjoy getting our hands dirty and just seeing what we can get to grow on our own. I, I would absolutely ag- agree. And maybe it's just Other because than just we've debt. matured. <laughs> right, right. We've grown it. <laughs> I, I would say absolutely we love watching things grow. I mean, animals, yes, is our jam, of course. But I've gotten to absolutely really enjoy gardening and doing doing all of that with you. Well, I think we have a lot of fun because we both sit back and we plan our garden or our flower beds together. And sometimes, you know, we disagree. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> we we don't always see eye to eye. We'll get to that in a minute. Do we see that, eye to eye? That may have been Do how our, uh, what was it, our Saturday night was spent. Right. <laughs> Marriage counseling. More to that to come in a bit. But, you know, one of the things I know Tigger <laughs> really enjoys is strawberries. And I've over tried. the years, you've had, you've had some struggles. I have too, but maybe not as much as you, but... What have you? What would you say is is zoning? You know the different plant zones. That's what I learned. Have to be- That's what I learned when I was living in Kansas. I had no idea there were other zones. And those people, some that were listening, are probably saying, "Well, duh." I had no idea. So I was starting from scratch, of never having a garden before. I had to call mom, like, "Yeah, I wanted some flowers <laughs> around my place." Remember, I was so to show you when you came and would visit me. I was all excited, you know, to yes. show you this and. I learned that zoning is very important based on temperature, rainfall, climate, moisture, humidity, all of that. And that affects the variety of of straw or strawberries, I guess, is the example. We like using, using that fruit. because I think that's that one that you grow up with. And that, it's that such... was the one that I wanted to grow was strawberries. And I watched all these videos about <laughs> everything on YouTube and I just went nuts. <laughs> I had all these contraptions. We'll get into that another episode, I'm sure. He did. Let's just put it this way. He ruined a lot of five gallon buckets. <laughs> I didn't ruin them. I just, the, uh, I put a bunch of holes in one because I was trying. Yeah, one? I, was gonna... I think there was a whole stack that moved yeah, from Kansas back north with Better you. Better we got a whole stack of five gallon buckets. <laughs> but I will agree with him. The zoning is a big thing, especially when it comes to like your strawberry patches, because it's one of those you hope that you plant it and it'll come back year after year. I know um, I spent some time gardening in Michigan. I joke about that, but you know, there was a patch I had there and that they don't, they get snow, but not the fierce cold temperatures that other states get. So were your strawberries, did they, if you compare them to what we had last year, Okay. we had the real small ones that were made, not even as big as a nickel or a quarter. They were very delicious. They were very sweet. I can't remember the, the kind we had, yeah, but in Michigan, ever, did you have bigger bearing. ones? They were ever bearing. Did That's you have the, the bigger fruit? Than what My we had strawberries last year. in Michigan were a little bigger, yeah. But we also had there. I also had a longer growing season, and again, like I said, we it snowed, but it didn't get as so bitter cold. So I did not have to cover gotcha. the patch and say right. mulching or or hay bales or straw bales or something like here, up here up but north. We didn't do that. Here. Yeah, we didn't. And did you notice we only have like five plants that came back? No. I didn't go and look yet. Anyway, we only have five plants. Okay, don't Something look. Something we should talk about before we <laughs> talk about my precious strawberries that I nurtured and sang to to try to, uh, to try to grow. Well, okay. Outside of getting our gardening, our country garden going with our strawberry patches and stuff, him and I also getting ready so that summer doesn't pass us by. And there's always those to do projects in your yard you think about for landscaping and whatnot. And sometimes it's one of those. Oh my gosh, I just want to get this over with. This is going to be more work than I want. Or maybe you take the time and you've Pinterested and hit every idea on your Pinterest board and you're Let's just be honest, you're talking about the two of us. Yes. You wanted it just you wanted it done yesterday. Everyone's laughing because that's usually the we have reverse roles. And, I wanted everything you done wanted yesterday. It done yesterday and I am very much the researcher yes. and I present different options and ideas of what you would like. And I will give Tigger credit. He everyone he had a 
wonderful selection of fabulous ideas for the backyard. But in my mind, all I could see was, oh my gosh, it will be August and we still won't have this project done. We're still arguing about. <laughs> and we were carrying rocks and I was trying to you know, set some things up. Well, would you like this over here? And would you like this there? And if you're wondering why we're start, trying to incorporate rocks is Tigger and I actually ended up sitting back after we butted heads for a while. And on our Saturday night last week, we sat back and looked at the situation and said, okay, A, what makes the most sense? What makes the most economical sense? What do we have around our place we can refurbish and use instead Recycle, yeah. landscaping because everything repurpose. is very expensive. Oh, we it went, is. We went to our garden stores and Menards and Lowe's and all that, and we priced out a few things. And boy, howdy! I mean, I went okay. We gotta. We, we came. Gotta we came back looking at each other. Maybe it doesn't look so bad. Right. Where exactly. what we were going to work <laughs> exactly. on? Exactly. Maybe it's fine. But we'll you know, we out. were able to go and landscape the entire side of one of our buildings, which was sixty feet long, and just by putting our brains together, realized, wow, we already had some split rails we hadn't used on the split rail fence that happened to be, for example, 16 footers. We went down to the fencing pile and, and looked at what do we have they available. They were straight. They looked actually decent. Tigger took the time and dug them in so that they won't move and shift. We tamped them and in. Tamped and tamped them in real nice and tight, like good ranch kids we are. You can tell we've built fence before. And uh, But we were also thinking ahead that a lot of places are having drought. We are one of those areas. Thankfully, we've had some rain recently, but we're not out of the drought monitor yet. And so we don't want to be planting quite yet some really expensive plants with everything being so expensive. So that's why him and I are trying to use rocks, things that we've found in our travels. We enjoy, you know, or, or we're stuck out rock picking. Now we're putting our rock picking in those fields to good use. I know. I love rock putting gardens, Putting them in our though. rock I gardens. I really, really like that. Can we have some pictures? If people have rock gardens oh, in their yards, please send I would them our love way. to see some pictures and some ideas of, of what you've done with with rocks in your areas or if you've done something or just what what your landscaping looks like i would love some additional ideas well and you know when i think about something simple as rocks this is something where tigger and i enjoy you know we've say hiking and getting out we don't worry we don't take these from areas you're not allowed to take rocks from but if we are out on some of our excursions we will bring home special rocks that we come across absolutely and they're just a great memento so there are just a few ideas from our place to yours Stay where you are. We make our final bend right after this. Public service announcement. Think safety first. Due to the extreme drought encompassing much of the United States, wildfire season is here. Before lighting that campfire or grill, check daily the local regulations for potential fire bans or fire restrictions. Buckstorm Hunts offering Black Hills guided rifle and archery hunts on over 1 million acres for deer and turkey and for South Dakota residents, elk and bighorn sheep too. Hunts are limited. Book a hunt today. Head to buckstormhunts.com. OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org, a nonprofit providing veterans and active service members with opportunities to hunt and fish at no cost to them. For more information or to donate, check out OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Again, that's OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Mickey's Mustard, you've heard us mention it before. It's the real McCoy straight from the heart of Texas and fat free to boot. Order yours today from Mickey'sMustard.com. Ain't nothing like it. Mickey'sMustard.com. Last year, we got to meet Rob, Todd, and Jason, the crew from Wobbolo Creek Outfitters, and hear about their hunts. What can we expect on a hunt with Wobbolo Creek Outfitters? We're a family-style hunt, and most of our hunters have come back five, six, since we've opened. That's kind of us every year. Book your hunt today. Head to WobbleoCreekOutfitters.com. That is W-E-A-U-B-L-E-A-U, Wobbleo, located in southwest Missouri for your next turkey or whitetail hunt. Be sure to tell them Beck from the Bend sent you. Welcome back. Heading to the field, we have Wildland Fire Captain Jason Jones here to give us an update on parts of the United States already dealing with many fires and tips to have us prepared for camping season. Let's take a listen. We are off to a very busy start to fire season 2022 with a number of fires in Texas, uh, Arizona, New Mexico. Currently in New Mexico has one of the largest fires in the United States. The, the Hermit's Peak Fire is roughly about 300,000 acres. Uh, California is starting to burn getting several fires a day, uh, small 
so far, but it's going to be a long and busy fire season for all of you that are getting ready to go camping, hiking, biking, hunting, fishing. Check with your local forest, local campground. Make sure you check those regulations. If you're going to have a campfire, please put it out, dead out. Make sure it's completely out. Check with uh, the campgrounds and make sure that you can have a stove. Also, as fire season uh, gets going and we start having more and more large fires, before you book that trip, uh, check with your local campgrounds and forests and make sure uh, about closures. I hate for you to get all the way up into uh, your trip and find out where you're going with clothes. Just be very conscious out there with uh, the fire danger, red flag warning. Uh, be safe out there. Take care of one another. And I'll remember uh, if there is a fire in your area and you're asked to evacuate, please evacuate. Uh, take care of your livestock. Have a nice day. Everybody be safe. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Captain Jones. Have fun, everyone, this summer. But do stay aware of your surroundings. In the crosshairs today, I mentioned this last weekend that I was going to get into this week, and that is graduation gifts. I know if you're like Tigger and I, they have been coming in for the last several weeks. It's exciting to see all of our friends and family and, you know, these kids that we've gotten to be involved with. And I shouldn't even call them kids anymore. These young men and women that are heading out on their own. Well, here's a list of some great gifts if you'd like to give something other than just hard-earned cash or gift cards, which I have nothing against, believe me. But I thought sometimes it's kind of fun to give something else outside of the norm. Have you ever thought about giving a hammock? Hammocks are great. They can use these camping. They can use these set up in a park where they're studying, relaxing. Another one, smart wool hiking crew socks. I love these smart wool hiking socks. I've used them myself, especially when I've traveled on long distances and I can't take a lot of stuff with me. These socks work terrific. Also, first aid kit. Have you thought about that? A lot of times you head off to school, get your first apartment or your car. First aid kit is always great to have on hand. How about a Swiss army knife or Leatherman? It was right close to around when I graduated high school that I got my first Leatherman and I still use it today. Another one, if you know this individual is really into camping, think about getting them their own lightweight camper cook set. A lot of times you can get the canisters with all of the little utensils inside ready to go. Flashlight set that includes a headlamp. This can be really important, especially if you know if the kid's sorry, these new students on their new life, they may need flashlights for their vehicles or if they are going from class to class on college campuses at dark, make sure you, when you do get them a flashlight set that includes a headlamp though. Pocket size Bluetooth speaker. I love these. Honestly, this is a great gift regardless of what age you are. Tigger just got me one for my birthday and we're talking we're talking pocket size. I'm not joking. I love it. It fits in my pocket and I actually take mine out with me on the kayak. Another one is a money belt with anti-theft RFID in it. A money belt, for those that don't know what it is, is a flattened version of a fanny pack and you can wear it underneath your clothing. That way you can keep some cash, say, you know, a credit card or two in there and not have to worry about anyone stealing it because they'll know none the wiser that it's on you. Here's one more fun one. If you know they are into that outdoorsy stuff with their friends and to encourage, you know, getting outside in the fresh air, get them a three to four person tent and then also maybe team up with another family member or friend and include a sleeping bag. Now, if you know that they're going to be living into a dorm setting or an apartment, something like this outside of just outdoorsy gifts would be to think about getting an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku. Or for their first apartment, uh, you've heard me say recipes for, with using this utensil before. I am in love with the Instapot. That is another great gift. It is an all-in-one. It is a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, an air fryer. Think about getting them an Instapot. Lastly, a cordless tool set. It doesn't matter what age you are, gal, guy, we can all use those tools. And it's something about being and feeling like we are self-sufficient. So there you have it. I hope I've made it a little bit easier for all of you with your graduation gift giving. And regardless, we want to say a very big congratulations to all of the 2022 graduates. 
Folks, if you have a field update, a topic we should investigate, a recipe or a tale of your own to share, send it this way. Call, text 305-900-BEND. That is 305-900-2363. Email at any time, bendradioshow at gmail.com. Social media, Facebook and Instagram. Follow us at, that's A with the circle, The Bend Show. Thank you to my producer and sound engineer, co-host Jeff Tigger Earhart, to Captain Jason Jones, Wildland Firefighter, on the current conditions and great reminder for all of us to be vigilant on how we proceed so that we do not cause more wildfires. As y'all keep making those memories, be sure to keep sending us in those pictures by email and always tagging at The Ben Show on social media. Hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, to ranching, farming, to your rural way of life, we want to see it all. We want to see and hear those memorable moments. Missed this episode? Find all our shows on the website, thebendshow.com, and be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. Booking events now. Change things up and have us, Beck and Tigger, help you with your event. From MCs to entertainment to acting as host couple, let us make your gathering extra special. Thank you to our partners, Atlas Tracks, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wablo Creek Outfitters, Buckstorm on YouTube, Ranch House Coffee, RFD TV, and the Cowboy Channel. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners that came along. And whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. Remember to keep up with me, Beck, all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. <music>